Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. It's so beautiful, the camera can't even focus on it. I'm sitting here with two, sitting here with two smart planters. I wanted to talk about these in a video. When you get on Amazon, you look up plant tech, which I know maybe isn't that common of a thing, but it's been something that's been on my mind lately. It's just weird things to test for the channel. I look up plant tech and gardening tech and smart planters. That's starting to become more of a trendy thing. These are the two things that show up the most commonly, at least for me. They're always pushing these two products on me. So we have here the Pico Smart Planter self-watering container really is what it is. And then the Vavofo, same deal. You can see what's inside, what goes into a smart planter and these self-sustaining kits is how they get touted, what people talk about with them. Whether or not this is really necessary, I tend to be on the side of, you just give your plants light and water, keep an eye on them, research what kind of plant it is and do those sorts of things, which is pretty much what you're still gonna be doing with this. I don't know how much tech is involved in something like this. It says telescopic grow light, high power, awesome LEDs, easy height adjustment, inbuilt self-watering, an odd way to put that automated and fuzz free lasts more than a week usb-c daisy chain i like that usb-c stay in current usb-c is usually my preference share power between picos minimal wire clutter magnetic multi-mount can use magnetic and adhesive mounts works on fridges walls and glass interesting and here's everything that's in the box you have the planter the multi-mount a metal bracket diffuser funnel wall mounting kit power cable daisy chaining cable and uh, five cable organizers no power supply or battery included no plant seeds or soil included there's three different color choices made in india highest crowd funded smart planter shipped to more than 130 countries has a very nice box I don't know how much anybody really cares about that packaging is nice has a fun little card in there with the thank yous and oh it's all in an envelope in there cable organizers those will be nifty if you're putting it up on the wall here's the bracket if you want to do it magnetically there's an isopropyl pad in there and then it's nice to meet you hello there that's funny dead jokes the thank yous and all that stuff. Here's how you can do things where you want it on the countertop, wall mounted, floor standing. These are all from Alta Farm. I don't know much about them. That's some cross promotional type stuff. Don't know anything about that brand. I'm just focused on this plant right here. It's cute, right? That's just a cute little planter. At first glance, I will say much, much, much smaller than what I had thought. Not going to be able to put anything very large in here. Looks like this is the reservoir down here. Minimum, maximum, halfway line. That's where the water is going to go. And lift this up. It's that telescoping light, telescopic light. And have all these, have all the cables inside as well. Nice braided cables too. Oh, and hardware for putting the brackets on the walls. Like I said, I'm pretty sure just going to be keeping this on the desk for right now. But it's nice to know that they have that option. I might, I could stick it on the fridge. I'll probably do that. And I assume this is the daisy chaining. No, this is probably the power. Well, I guess you can decide what you want to do with them. They're USB-C to USB-C. If you need a cord this long to power it, then that's what you would use that for. If your planters are really far apart, then maybe that's what that would be for. Those are things to think about afterwards. The planter itself, man, that is tiny, really small. I'm not going to be able to do much with that. I should probably have a quick look at the user manual there is a qr code on there safety information that's not important what's inside the box up close yeah all have already seen that oh one of these things is a pole stabilizer that's probably this big one right here that comes with all the different attachments for organizing the cables this one right there is to help keep the pole stable from moving around maybe you know, there have been some issues when you have it up high, having it move around, I don't know. Multiple wick tips to choose from. Wick tip one is for succulents and low water plant. Wick tip two is a big hole. <laughs> choose that one for other plants. Fill the grow pod with soil or other growing media. You may add pebbles, clay balls, or gravel to the inner pod for better aeration and roots. Sow seeds about half an inch below the top surface and cover with a layer of media. You may also transplant seedlings or cuttings instead of seeds. Be a fun way to go with this one. Watering. Attach the funnel on the mounting points on either side. Did this come with a funnel? Is there a funnel here somewhere? I'll look at that afterwards. Pour water through the funnel till it reaches max level. If the water level drops after a day or so, do not water again. 
top up only when it reaches the minimum level after five to seven days. Clean it, remove the telescopic pole, use a Phillips screwdriver. Once the soil and growing media is removed, force tap water through the refill holes and pour it, okay. Pole stabilizer says what that's for. Is it magnetic? The back of the, oh, oh, it turns out these are all magnetic. So if you got this guy up on the fridge, you wanna clamp that big one in behind it to help keep it probably from tipping forward would be my guess. Maybe it's just top heavy when you have that opened up all the way. Throughout the wall brackets, the cable organizers, the grow light. It just says that you can adjust it if the plants get taller, maintain a minimum distance of one to two inches from the plant canopy. That is very close, but maybe necessary if the LED is not very strong. Use the diffuser to reduce the light intensity at the highest point once the plants are closer to the light. This is probably the diffuser, I'm guessing, but that just clamps on in there and diffuse things. Gotta be what that's for. Okay, this plugs into a five volt power brick, which is not included. And apparently there's also, oh, you weren't even, you couldn't even see it, five volt power brick. This also has an optional timer that will turn the light on off at 16 hour intervals. Then all the information about daisy chaining. I'm not gonna be doing that because I only have the one, but it's nice to know. Before getting too far into this, I should probably check and make sure the thing even works. I would of course like to get everything planted up. That's the fun part, but doesn't really make sense to do that if this doesn't work. Something I'm seeing here that could be a potentially a problem. Part of the USB-C is covered up here because the plastic on top is cracked. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. I would assume that that's probably supposed to be one piece, right? And that looks like a break, doesn't it? You'd think it'd be more in the middle if it were unintentional. Regardless, I can get this in there. I should be able to make it fit. Not ideal, but it works. Hey, nothing happened. Maybe uh, that side just doesn't work. And try it over here. This power brick is more than capable of powering something that only needs five volts. I'll give it a try with one of the cables that they included with it. That shouldn't make a difference, but sometimes it does. There we go. All right. Maybe USB-C to USB-C is not the way to go with this. It is top heavy. When you have this up like that, it really does want to tip over. Maybe that will change when we get some kind of plant in here. I have no idea what to stick in this thing. That is so small. What do I have around here that I would want to put in a container this tiny? I'm going to poke around. Maybe I'll just do a cutting from something and just, I, don't, I don't know. Let me figure it out. Magnets work and I think I maybe found some plants that will work inside of here. In the pictures that they put up on the Amazon listing, you know, it showed these big lush like rosemaries and herbs. I'm not gonna call it misleading because the dimensions are right there on the listing. I just, I don't know. I assumed it was gonna be bigger, that's all. So I have here a little cutting from a peperomia that has started to sort of do something. Not much, I think it would actually benefit from being moved into something else that doesn't seem to enjoy that container or the spot where I've been keeping on the grow shelves. And I also have this little asparagus fern here, which I think would look a lot nicer in this container, but I would rather hold on to it for a different project. And I think that I should keep this set up for a while so I can give progress notes on what's going to happen with these planters. So maybe I'll just go with the peperomia. These are just little pieces of plastic that have holes in the top. That's all it is. So one has a big hole, one has a little hole. The wick is already down there in the bottom. I was thinking that it was an entire thing that you had to swap out. So I have to put, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think my hands are small enough to do this. That's what I'm supposed to do is just try and yeah, that didn't work. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. Much of a difference as far as the sizes go on that hole. It's very minimal. So I don't really know how much of a difference that's going to make. I'm going to put in this potting mix. It's a, just an all-purpose, organically rich potting mix that I have added some perlite and some chunk to to help with aeration. Nothing fancy or special about it. And then the peperomia. I don't even know what this thing's going to look like as far as roots go. Yeah, I didn't think there'd be much going on in there. So I probably need to put in some more soil. That's that's almost about right, but I'll put in a little bit more. I probably just got dirt in there. I'm sure soil fell down inside those holes, so it might be a good idea to tape off these holes when you fill it up. Just be very, very, very careful. This is going to be messy. A little bit more over there. Lots of that ended up on the desk. Okay, there it is. I know it's not going to look as big and beautiful as the stuff in the pictures, but I want to put something in here that can actually watch grow and see what happens with it. I've been looking around here. I don't have a funnel. Did anybody see a funnel when I was unboxing this? Is it maybe a card that I'm supposed to fold up? Like some kind of origami style? $38.99. I feel like you go ahead and throw the funnel in there, but this is fine. It's 
Just gonna have to be very careful with how I do There's no way. The water doesn't want to drain out of the middle part because it's raised with the wick in there. But using a funnel would probably be a really good idea if you happen to have a funnel that's small enough for something like this. I do not. That's basically to the max line. I'll say that's good enough. And test out the magnet. Yep, that works. And see there's dirt that got down in there. Probably could have avoided that had I used the funnel, but you know, I, I don't know, didn't have one. Plug that back in, get it down nice and low for the plant, and that's it. I, okay, I guess that's cool. $38.99 cool? I don't know. I'm gonna let that be up to y'all. It really depends. You can daisy chain them together. They have magnets and it's self-watering container. That's really the only thing that separates us from any other self-watering containers that the light is built into the container and you can daisy chain them together and it's magnetic. I like that it came with the cable organizers. That's nice so that if you want to put multiples up together on a wall, maybe your cable management will look more tidy. Heck, it's a nice touch. So if you have some place you'd like to put it that doesn't have a magnetic surface, you can put that on the wall or whatever that surface is and then this will magnetize to this. Diffuser, yeah, lots of accessories. It's just so small. If it were a little bit bigger, not even much, just a little bit bigger, I'd be more into it. So now I'm curious about the next one, the 1899 version. Doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but half the price, roughly half the price, a little bit more than half the price. Anything else in there? Nope. Oh, here's that one. This is seemingly larger, a little bit difficult to tell. I'm gonna put them side by side and it definitely looks bigger, but let's see what's actually going on with the pot. Yeah, the pot itself, look at that, that's tiny. It's just a net pot. So I would imagine as far as what size plant you're going to use, pretty much in the same boat here, but this is just, it looks bigger. LED puck on this is larger and removable. So that's kind of cool. I don't really know what's cool about it. I just guess it's something that might come in nifty. Instructions, definitely a difference in quality. The plant seeds into the sponge, put the sponge onto the filter. That's in the bottom cover of the base filter screen. Uh-huh, add water to the filter amount of water fill lines. This is for planting plants and then there's just hydroponic mode which I think is what that actually should be since there's no mention of soil and then soil culture mode. So there are various ways to use it. Not magnetic, no brackets or anything like that. It does have a USB-C to regular USB in there and some adhesive mounts to use if you want to put it on a wall and uh, risk it falling off. These are the sub buckles. One of them's an any, one of them's an Audi. So this one would go on the wall right here. And then this one right here slots inside of it. And that would be attached to the planter itself right here. I won't be doing that. I do not trust an adhesive to hold anything up to the wall for a long period of time. I'm just gonna let this sit on the desk. How high does the LED go? Looks like it goes about the same as the other one. Maybe not quite as high. I wonder what the intensity is on this LED. There's the power, kind of bright, has different modes, but the instructions doesn't say anything about these different modes. Clearly it's just low, medium, high. That's it, three settings. Looks like you can change the color of the LEDs. All white, you can go just the reds and the blues, or you can do all of them to get closer to a full spectrum going on there. And then there's a timer. Usually these sorts of timers, you need to make sure that you set it at the time you want them to turn on. So maybe tomorrow in the morning at say at like 7 a.m., then I would go ahead and hit that. And then in theory, it should turn on at that point. I'm just guessing. Something else I am noticing with this, you can see up here on the top is that the USB-C is on the very front. It's right there at the very top where all the buttons are, which makes some sense, but it's also on the front of it. You can't turn this in any other way because it's the holes right there. So if you were to try and move it around there, then the light's not going to be over the plant. Which means that this is not meant or designed to be plugged in at all times. This is something that you'll have to charge. I don't know how often, the instructions don't have very much information in them, but you have to take this off and charge it. Probably every few days, maybe once a week, and then put it back on there. Unless, you know, maybe, oh, okay. Well, should have seen that coming. It's all right, can fix it later. Unless you're okay with having it plugged in like this. But I think that looks pretty stupid, doesn't it? If you look at it from a different angle. 
I, I guess the power input really should have been on the other side because that means that in order to use this, you gotta charge the light. You can't just leave it plugged in. To me, that's not really simplifying things. Make it so it can be plugged in and left on. To me, the entire point of these products is to simplify things and have more of an all-in-one system. It's detachable top that you gotta charge on its own. To me, that's really all it takes for this to be a fail in my book. I don't wanna put a plant in there because then I'm going to have to take care of this. I don't wanna take care of it. I'm gonna give this away to someone. I can guarantee you, I'm not going to remember to charge this thing. It's gonna go out at some point and then the plant's not going to have light for a certain amount of time. I'm just going to end up viewing this product as a pain in the butt. $18.99, good deal. And it's pretty cute. I like the way it looks. If you could plug it in, I would be all for it, especially just for cuttings. You just want something small that you can have cuttings inside of and get them going. That looks pretty nice. It's neat looking. It holds a whole lot of water, but the power situation is just not well thought out in my opinion. This is just a light puck. You can get LED uh, little umbrella puck lights to put over your plants for relatively cheap. Most of them, you can get them with telescoping poles that go on them, just like both of these have. The only difference is you have to either clip them to the side of the pot or insert them in the soil. They don't look quite as put together as something like this would. All right, I guess let's plant it up, but I find that this thing needing to be charged and something you can't plug in on its own to be a huge drawback. I don't need more things to charge. If they had just put the USB-C in a different spot, it would have been fine. So there are different options with how to use this device. You can do it from seed, if you do that, they say to go ahead and put the sponge down in here, put your seeds in the middle, put it in there, put this inside of the main reservoir, fill it to the max line, and basically the same as the other one. Only refill it when the water level is way down there below the minimum line. Or you can use it for hydroponic. Come on, get out of there. And with that, they say to just use this piece, insert it into here, and let this be basically just like a vase that you would keep a cutting in. Put the water to the max line, same difference, let it go down. If you want to use it for planting things in soil, they say to take this out and plant it up basically just like a flower pot and then put it back in there and do the same water thing again. So for planting this one up, I want to make sure that I put something in here that's going to be very forgiving because I have a feeling, like I was just saying, with all the things I already have to stay on top of charging, when the stupid light on this thing burns out or the battery dies, chances are days are going to pass where it's not going to have a light before I notice that it needs to have something charged on there. Charged on there? That didn't make any sense. Orange marmalade philodendron. This is a plant that I don't particularly have any attachment to, and it was sent to me by mistake when I placed an order a while ago, so I think that that would be a good candidate for this container. It hasn't been potted up in here too terribly long, so I don't think I'm gonna be doing much damage wiggling that out from its potting mix. It did fairly well, considering it's only been in that blend for a few weeks. It can take a lot of that soil up from in here. And get this back filled. It's not perfectly centered, but I think that that is probably as good as that's going to get because of the shape of the root ball that's on there. This one can add the water from the sides or just straight in there because it has an open bottom. There's not a cone with a little piece of wick in it. So I'm just going to keep on watering this in nice and slowly until the water level comes up to that max line. Okay, that's pretty good. Took a while, would have been faster if I had used the hole, but I didn't. This is going to have to work. The adjustability on the light is, yeah, I'd say that's fine. Make sure that I have this tuned up probably all the way since it's on battery and not very powerful. I'm gonna leave it on this full spectrum setting and uh, that's it. Comment down below, what do you think of these things? To me, it's a niche market, I would say. With the one with the magnets on it that you can daisy chain together, this Pico planter, I completely understand why people would want these. I think they need to cost less. You can stick it to the side of your fridge and you could put herbs in them. Not a lot, but you could do some thyme that stays relatively small. It's something that responds well to being pruned on. Maybe some dill that's nice and airy because remember the light goes up. Not a lot, but enough to have some dill in there. Maybe a very small rosemary plant if you're pruning on it a lot. Basil, I do a lot of digging for a cultivar that has lots and lots of small leaves on it because you're going to have to keep it fairly small in something like this. Oregano, good option. You'd have multiples of these together and uh, then have your own little herb garden right there on the fridge. Not gonna take up counter space. They look kind of cool. They both look kind of cool. With this one, my main issue is that it's just that right there. That's just the dumbest place to put the charge port because now you can't plug it in and leave it plugged in unless you want a cord 
hanging out the front. So the only option you have, if you don't want a cord sticking out of the front at all times, is to take it off and charge it. And to me, that just defeats the purpose, especially when there are other versions, there are lots of other puck lights that you can get. You could just stick on there and plug it in and then never have to mess with it again. A lot of them have built-in timers. That is something that I think is lacking with this one. I'm also noticing this light, it's fairly warm. It's not hot, but it's fairly warm and it hasn't been plugged in all that long. That could be because it's plugged into a battery pack here instead of in the wall, but I don't think that really shouldn't have anything to do with it. It's going to be drawing the same amount of power. All right, it's been a week and uh, I have some final thoughts. Not going to be much to say about the plant growth, right? So it's only been a week. Those things take a lot more time. Not all that concerned about getting plants to grow with these. So self-watering, aspects on them pretty good again been a week just said that and the water levels just dropped to the point where water needs to be added the only thing the pico that's something i should say i would use the small adapter if you buy this there are two different ring sizes remember one for succulents one for everything else i would use the small one because that soil has stayed very 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 moist more than it probably should for a lot of plants so keep that in mind if you buy this one right here Use a small adapter, unless it's a plant that absolutely loves a ton of moisture. I had the Pico on the side of the fridge, never had any issues with it wiggling, falling loose, anything like that. It stayed put just fine with the doors opening and closing. Didn't seem like it was going to go anywhere. The Vev, whatever this word is, this one, had it sitting up inside of a bookshelf. Figured may as well put it someplace where I don't have electricity. And it worked out there. The downside to this one, like I know I said over and over and over again, no way to plug it in without a cord just hanging over the front. It may not even be an option for all I know. Sometimes when you have things that are set up with this battery style, if you have them plugged in, they don't function. Like you can only charge them. There's a one-way situation going on with current there. So I'd, maybe you can't plug it in, period. But if you can, and you're okay with the cord hanging over the front, then it's an option. I don't think it's the best option, but it's something you could work with perhaps. It was nice being able to just set it on the bookshelf. As far as the battery capacity goes for this puck up there, it took it about three, maybe four days until it died completely. And then after that, I noticed that it only took about a day and a half for the light to dim. This is as bright as that goes, so that's not great. We want the light to be nice and bright for the majority of the plants that are in there. And I also never had the light come on on its own. So I was thinking that this was going to be like a lot of other conventional timers are built into things now where the time you turn it on is the time it will turn itself on every single day. Maybe it's supposed to do that and mine just didn't work. I don't know, not sure but it never did. So I still had to turn it on every day. Not good, don't think you should have to do that. And the timer only goes up to nine hours. You have three options. There's three hours, six hours, and nine hours. That's as long as it will run. For the majority of plant lights, especially ones that don't have a high output, meaning lots and lots of brightness, basically, then you wanna be pushing more towards the 10, 12, 14, sometimes even more than that. 10 to 12 hours, usually a good range. Nine hours, that's not really the best for a grow light. It should be more up towards the 10 to 12 hour range, especially for a light that's gonna dim down after, what, 36 hours of use, and you're not going to get as much brightness out of it. Not crazy about that. And then all the other things I mentioned, the design, this should just put it on the back or put it on the side over here, something like that, and make it so you can plug it in. It's, it's, it's stupid. Why have it only battery style? It doesn't make sense. Unless you are very devoted to having a plant someplace where you cannot have any power, then this is a great option for you, perhaps. Maybe at work, and you'll remember to take that light off every night and plug it into charge. When you come in the next day, you take it off and set it back up. I don't know, you do you, there are options there. It looks cool, I'll give it that. I don't see it being something I'm going to hold on to because I'm not gonna remember to keep that light charged. And the Pico Planter, it comes back down to the things I mentioned before. It's small and uh, very expensive. I think $38.99 is a pretty high price to pay for this tiny little pot. The light on it is very powerful. I had to raise it up because it scorched that Peperomia when I had it down all the way. So you get a lot of intensity out of those LEDs. I mentioned they get warm. I went ahead and checked that out where I think it maxed out at like 119 in certain spots. That's not unbelievably hot. There's nothing outrageous, but it does make me wonder if the life of the LEDs maybe won't be as good with that heat in there. And that's an easy thing to fix. At least this one has a timer, right? This one over here, I saw it in the instructions. There's an optional timer. I looked that up on Amazon and I <laughs> am not gonna buy it 
It's $35. $35 for what looks like a really, really cheap piece of technology. I did go on Amazon and grab a four pack of Bluetooth timers. Four. There are four in here for $22. They were on sale. I think they're normally 30 bucks. I've used the Govi ones plenty of times. These are great. The app is easy to work with. Their products usually last a long time. And $22, even 30 bucks for four of these. That's a pretty good price. And the setup with the timer is primitive, I would say, at best. I'm a fan of the clear technology. I think that looks neat. But this is giving me the vibe of like a free, you know, 100 megabyte flash drive you would have gotten when you signed up for school for your classes back in like 2006. You set it up with multiple presses and you have a long dangly cord that you're going to plug into the wall and then you plug more cords into it as opposed to just plugging something into an outlet where you're not gonna have more things dangling. Just my personal preference, I don't understand why this should be $36. That tech should be built into the light. It can get complicated when you're trying to set things up with lighting. I know this from working with fish tanks when you want to have one light control all the others, that can be a complicated thing to pull off. Perhaps having them daisy chained together is what makes it more complicated to put timers in them. I don't know, but I would just, just get the Bluetooth one. It's much more affordable. I am curious as to whether or not daisy chaining them will work when hooked up to the Bluetooth timer. I don't really know why it wouldn't, but we can figure that out if I decide to buy another one someday for now. I'm good with just having these two. Like I said, I'm probably gonna be giving this away because I just don't see myself keeping that charge or even I might just keep it as it is and take the light off of it because that's a self-watering pot. It looks pretty neat. I wish it didn't say Vavofo, whatever that is on the front. They could have put that on the side, but Pico's on the front of that one too. You know, branding, not surprised by that. Overall, they're interesting. They're both disappointing in some ways and pretty neat in other ways. Now, comment down below your thoughts and opinions on them. I'm not going to like give a rating or anything like that. That's up to y'all. I took them out told you everything I can about them. And now I turn that over to the comment section. Have fun with it. These were just hit and miss and they were missed in such obvious ways. That's what gets me with them is these were so close to being really cool products. The most simple things made them dumb. <laughs> in my, that's just my opinion is just dumb. This is, this is stupid. Basement up here is stupid. Having it be a rechargeable puck, I think that's stupid. I think it's gonna be a very niche market of people who want something and are willing to take a light off, plug it in and charge it basically every single day if you wanna maintain the brightness on this light. Also, I could have a lemon, I don't know. The only way to know would be for me to order multiples of all these and I'm not gonna do that. That's not the point. If you were to order one, like most people would, and that's the product you get, kind of like this one being cracked on top. Not great, but it still functions. I could order more and see if they come in broken, but no, not gonna do that. That was your test, you get one shot, right? That's how reviews work. Yeah, moving forward, I don't see a use for this other than as just a self-watering container. I won't be using the light on it. With this one, I do think it would be neat to have a couple more of them to put up on the fridge and have some herbs in them, have them chained together. It's fun, it's kitschy, and you have you know your fresh herbs right there and they're not taking up space on the counter because they're magnetic on the side of the fridge. It's just, I don't know, works out well for my kitchen and my layout. But the price, $38.99, I don't know if I see myself buying many more of these. That's pretty pricey, right? And how many are you gonna daisy chain together when they're 40 bucks a pop? 50, the price went up to $50. If it there, that's 49, this went up to 49.99. And from what I can tell in the listing, it doesn't say that it's coming with anything that it didn't have in it before. I forgot to turn the TV for cats off. You've been hearing birds chirp this entire time. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well. Let everybody know what your thoughts and opinions are on these things. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.